All right. Well, thank you for uh, inviting us to uh, attend your meeting tonight and uh, to talk about the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad. Um, the Wisconsin Great Northern is a family uh, operated short line railroad, uh, an actual uh, class three common carrier uh, short line railroad operating out of uh, our office in Trigo, Wisconsin. Um, we started in 1997 and uh, have been expanding our services ever since. Um, our Director of Passenger Development, Robert Taburn, has uh, put together a history presentation uh, celebrating uh, our 24 years uh, so far in business. And uh, we're gonna take a look at that now. Um, and then after that, uh, we'll have an opportunity to answer questions um, about the history of the railroad and where we're at now. We'll look at some of the uh, trains that um, we are current, well, not currently operating as we're shut down for the COVID uh, this season, um, but that we will uh, resume with uh, next spring. Um, and then the second half of our program, um, which we're very excited and the reason uh, that we didn't uh, come visit you in, in, in the springtime um, was we wanted to, to be able to share with you uh, our exciting new project, uh, the rebuild of the Mark Twain Zephyr. So without further ado, uh, I will hand the uh, uh, microphone over to Robert and Robert uh, is going to tell you about uh, almost 25 years of history of the Wisconsin Great Northern. All right, uh, thanks Greg. Just wanted to say hi to everybody tonight and uh, it's been an honor to work for Greg for the last year. We moved up from Milwaukee to be his uh, director of passenger development. Um, Wisconsin Great Northerns is an amazing place to be with the uh, Pacific Parlor car and the and the Mark Twain Zephyr project. Greg told me about the project about a year ago during my job interview and I'm like, wow, there is no better place where I wanna be than to be part of the Wisconsin Great Northern. So honored to give the presentation tonight and uh, we'll uh, go ahead and switch it over here and hopefully this goes well. All right, thanks a lot, Greg. It is great to be with everybody tonight as well. We just wanna mention uh, some uh, history of the line before we, we tell you more about the Wisconsin Great Northern. The portion that the Wisconsin Great Northern operates on is known as the Omaha X. The Omaha route, of course, being the builders of the railroad, eventually they ended up being absorbed into the Chicago Northwestern. And X, well, if you look on your screen, you can see pretty obviously why it was called the X. From Chandler, which is pretty close to present day Spooner, the line breaks off in four different directions to the northwest towards Superior, the Twin Ports, to the northeast to Ashland, Ashland Junction, and Bayfield, to the southwest toward Hudson and on to the Twin Cities in Minnesota, and to the southeast toward Eau Claire and Chippewa Falls. The rail line was constructed between 1871 and 1883. And you can see by the color coded portions of the route on your screen when the various portions of the line were constructed. What the Wisconsin Great Northern currently operates on today is in a portion of the light blue, which means the tracks that we use were originally constructed in 1880, starting Chandler Superior Junction, and then our line uh, breaks off in the northeast direction toward Hayward. Here are some items that we have found and collected in our archives at the Wisconsin Great Northern. We are putting together lots of history. Next year is our 25th anniversary, and we'll be releasing a new website and a series of books that will deal with the history of the railroad and the Omaha X. So we've been busy piecing together some of the history of the route. On the left-hand side of your screen is an early advertisement that if you look inside the circle shows the Omaha X and some of the rest of the route owned by the Chicago St. Paul Minneapolis and Omaha Railroad, the formal name for the Omaha route. Over on the upper right hand side of your screen is an employee pass that we found from 1895. 
On the lower right hand side of your screen is an early timetable between Chicago, Ashland, Bayfield via Spooner. Here's a look at some early photos that we have in our archives at the Wisconsin Great Northern. Here's some photos of the depot at Spooner. The photo on the bottom was taken not too far north of our present day depot at the Wisconsin Great Northern. That was a photo that was taken in Trigo, we believe in 1905. So here's a look at the Omaha route between Hudson and Ashland. Now there is a lot of history involved in the railroad line and uh, that could pretty much be a separate presentation on the Omaha X and maybe we'll get a chance to come back and do that for you some other time. Uh, but we do wanna of course get on to telling you more about the Wisconsin Great Northern itself. But uh, we do operate on the line that ran from Hudson up to Ashland. And we did put the box there on your screen now, which shows our route between uh, Spooner. And these are the old mile posts. Um, they have changed slightly uh, with the Wisconsin Great Northern, but these are the old mile posts. Spooner at 79.7, Trigo at 87.1, and if you go up all the way up to Hayward, 106.5. Here is a closer look at some of the area of the Wisconsin Great Northern where our passenger trains do run from the Wisconsin Great Northern. Our depot runs north along the Wild Rivers Trail, crosses Potato Creek and goes up to Trigo Junction, at which point our line will make a sharp turn toward the right and we head to VZ Springs, which is a very historical and scenic overlook of the Namakagan River and the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway, one of 419 units of the National Park Service. That is the end of our sightseeing excursions. However, our dinner train and most of our other excursions do continue on to Earl and further on to Beanbrook. Our railroad line does go past uh, Springbrook all the way to uh, Hayward Junction and just before on the west side of Hayward. Just one more note about the Great Omaha X in case you're curious uh, who owns what uh, and what has come of the Great Omaha X today. The railroad lines in red are abandoned with the tracks torn up. The orange line between Rice Lake and Cameron, Wisconsin is leased to the Wisconsin Northern, which is a separate freight railroad, but is actually owned by Canadian National. The yellow line between Cameron and, and Chippewa Falls is leased also to the Wisconsin Northern, a separate freight railroad, but is owned by Union Pacific. The green line between Chippewa Falls and Eau Claire is owned and operated by Union Pacific. Canadian National uses a portion of the Omaha X between Gordon and Superior. And here's a closer look at our line uh, in the dark blue, about six and a half miles of our line is owned by Canadian National and leased to us at the Wisconsin Great Northern. And finally, the portion of the line there in uh, purple, and that's between Spooner and uh, just west of Hayward, where the line becomes Canadian National owned, that is owned by the state of Wisconsin and leased to us at the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad. So we're gonna tell you a little bit more about the Wisconsin Great Northern story this evening. Greg Freeland, owner of the Wisconsin Great Northern, became interested in railroading during his early childhood. In 1981, at just 12 years old, Greg joined the Transportation Club at the Lake Superior Museum of Transportation in Duluth, Minnesota. Greg spent most weekends of his teenage years working on the museum's tourist railroad and restoring historic equipment. After high school, he worked as a guide and mechanical apprentice at the museum before purchasing his first railroad car. Greg met Mardell Cross in 1992, beginning the pursuit of their railroad operations. They were later married in 2004. 
What is now known today as the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad is a successor of the Duluth and Northern Minnesota Railway, also known as the DNM, which was incorporated on July 31st, 1992. After a couple of years, the Duluth and Northern Minnesota Railway had the opportunity to purchase ex Duluth Misabian Iron Range number 28 from the Lake Superior and Mississippi Railroad. This coach, pictured here on your screen, was built in 1912 by the American Car and Foundry Company of St. Louis. The D and NM completely rebuilt the car from the ground up. Work completed included a new roof, a vestibule area, brake system, wiring, plumbing, floor, restroom, kitchen, bar, and interior furnishings. The car was lettered for the DNNM and was given the name Arrowhead. The rebuild project took Greg and Mardell one year to complete. The car was used on several special excursions on the North Shore Scenic Railroad in 1995. In February 1996, the DNNM was asked by the Lake Superior Railroad Museum to operate a dinner train on the North Shore Scenic Railroad. The DNNM felt it would not be able to operate the service with only the Arrowhead, so it's purchased its second car on May 2nd, 1996. Here's a look at a couple of uh, newspaper clippings from the DNNM and you can see uh, Greg Vreeland with the Wisconsin Great Northern. He is pictured on the uh, right screen. And here is a proposal that the uh, Greg and Mardell put together for equipment lease and operational conditions between the Lake Superior Museum of Transportation and the DNNM. So here is the second coach that we were talking about uh, that they needed for their service. Uh, Greg and Mardell immediately began rebuilding it into a full table car. DNNM car number 32, the Apostle Isle, pictured here on your screen, is a 50-seat mahogany interior dining car with a food service area in one end. Following the DNNM's 1996 season of operating trains on the North Shore Scenic Railroad, the partners decided that they wanted to explore other opportunities to operate their own railroad. Discussions were held with local government and business leaders from Spooner in Washburn County, Wisconsin in February 1997. The community supported the proposed railroad and the partners set about putting the project together. During the next 120 days, they arranged financing, leased, and rehabilitated the track, which is now owned by the state of Wisconsin. They also purchased and restored locomotive 862 to operation and moved the equipment to Spooner. The Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad was incorporated on April 1st, 1997. Here is a look at what was going to be the original logo on the left-hand side of your screen for the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad. A lot of people have never seen this before uh, with the fish jumping out of the water. And over on the right-hand side of your screen is a press release that was put out announcing the creation of the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad. Here is a, another newspaper article over on the right-hand side of your screen mentioning that the Spooner Trigo line is reopened. And over on the left-hand side was a sign that was put up along highways 53 and 63 warning motorists that the railroad line is active again. Trains are now running between Spooner and Trigo. Here is a look at uh, a ticket. Of for one of the first runs from Spooner to Trigo Junction on the Wisconsin Great Northern. Over on the left-hand side of your screen, over on the right-hand side of your screen is one of the early advertisements. Here is a look at the 862, which we mentioned was purchased and restored uh, for, so that the line could operate between Spooner and Trigo, one of the first engines used by the Wisconsin Great Northern. And here is a look at the 112. The first season of the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad was spent working on the equipment, of course, running trains 
Trains operated daily in July and August 1997 and on weekends through October 1997. Work continued to convert tool car 112, which you see on your screen, into a full-length concession car containing a snack bar and gift shop. Office car number 34 became the railroad's ticket office and was parked next to the Chicago and Northwestern Depot in Spooner. Both 34 and 112 were purchased from the Duluth Masabi and Iron Range and arrived in Spooner on July 4, 1997, ending a four-year purchase negotiation process. The second season of operations for the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad began with the Cottontail Express in early April 1998 and ended the final weekend in October. The trains continued to operate on the seven miles of track between Spooner and Trigo. The Vreelands added a full slate of special events through the 1998 season, including buffet trains, picnic trains, hobo trains, and rodeo train robberies. All season, there was a cloud over the operation as the Union Pacific Railroad announced their intention to abandon their railroad line between Trigo and Hayward. This would have meant the Wisconsin Great Northern would have been an isolated railroad, no longer having an outside connection at Hayward Junction. This could have meant 1998 was the second and final season for the Wisconsin Great Northern. A battle to purchase the 12.68 miles of track between Trigo and Hayward Junction lasted through the winter and into the 1999 operating season, with the track finally being purchased by the Washburn County Transit Commission in early July 1999. The fourth season for the Wisconsin Great Northern in 2000 brought some major changes to the operations and the equipment of the railroad. A standard schedule was adopted to be utilized year to year, offering train rides on weekends during May and June, and again in September and October, plus daily rides during the summer months of July and August. The second major change was an operating agreement with the Locomotive and Tower Preservation Fund Limited of Eau Claire regarding their steam locomotive 2719. The 2719, which you see here on your screen, came to Spooner in late June 2000. The 2719 operated trips every other weekend through early September of 2000. The 2719 continued to operate on the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad through the 2002 season. The most significant project of the 2004 season at the Wisconsin Great Northern was the conversion of a commuter coach into Chapel Car Everlasting, making it the only active Chapel Car in the United States. For a brief period of time in the 1890s and ending in the late 1930s, 13 Chapel Cars roamed the newly laid rails of the western United States from Chicago to the west coast. The purpose of these Church on Wheels was to bring the Word of God to the frontier towns along the new railroads. The primary mission was to unite settlers and pull together new congregations in those developing towns. Many town sites during that period went as quickly as the railroads could lay track on their advance west. The churches of the time did not want to waste valuable resources by constructing buildings in locations that would not develop into permanent communities. The chapel car was parked next to the station and served the community by allowing residents to worship together and unite for the purpose of building a lasting community and parish. As you can see here, Greg and Mardell Vreeland of the Wisconsin Great Northern became intrigued with the idea of having their own chapel car when, in 1996, they had the opportunity to work on the movement of a historic chapel car from Montana to Michigan. When completed on June 5, 2004, the Wisconsin Great Northern became home to the Great Wedding Train, allowing people to get married on the train in a car that resembled a historic small chapel. In fact, Greg and Mardell were the first couple to get married on the chapel car. 
The Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad's 13th season operated between Saturday, April 4th, and Thursday, December 31st, 2009. Besides the familiar array of special and regular trains that operated this year, this was the first time that the Wisconsin Great Northern began storing empty freight cars on its line north of Springbrook, Wisconsin. This side of the business has clearly grown since its initial trial year in 2009. But you may be asking yourself, why are there so many freight cars stored on the Wisconsin Great Northern? Well, the answer is quite simple. Larger freight railroads, like the Canadian National, simply do not have enough space in their yards to store all their idle cart, especially in economic downturns, which well, they were experiencing in 2009. So they look for convenient, out-of-the-way places to park the cars, well, usually dormant tracks and rail sidings that are rarely used. The Wisconsin Great Northern originally thought about operating excursions all the way from Spooner to Hayward. However, when that plan didn't materialize, that freed up the northern half of the line for freight car storage. This had minimal impact on passenger excursions since no trains really operated north of Springbrook anyway at the time. The biggest news to come out of the Wisconsin Great Northern for its 15th season in 2011 was the addition of what would become the popular bed and breakfast train. This idea was truly like nothing else seen anywhere in the country. Even 10 years from now after the original conception, the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad continues to operate America's only moving bed and breakfast train. Passengers board at 5 p.m., enjoy dinner and a train ride, retire to their accommodations to enjoy a night on the train while parked at the depot, followed by breakfast in the dining car before departure. Here's a look at one of the original accommodations, picture over on the left-hand side of your screen that shows the uh, bunks, uh, which uh, Greg will tell you a little bit more about our service, but we, uh, we only have larger beds now, no longer for the bunks on our bed and breakfast train. Over on the right hand side is a advertisement from our first season in 2011 of the bed and breakfast train. Now after a decade and a half of providing tourist railroad excursions out of Spooner, a major change occurred for the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad in 2013. As best as crews could during the very harsh winter of 2012 into 2013, construction pressed on for a new depot, offices, and a train yard located in Trigo. Uh, it's about four miles north of Spooner. Not only would this location outside of the city give the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad the room it needed for future growth, it also eliminated passenger trains from having to run over the rather, well, unscenic stretch of tracks between Spooner and Trigo, which pretty, pretty much just parallel highways 53 and 63. Moving to Trigo allowed new sightseeing trains which could travel to VZ Springs and the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway and back in less than one hour. The operations of the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad, officially switching over from Spooner to Trigo, occurred on June 20th, 2013. Another new business opportunity presented itself for the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad in 2014 when the Wisconsin Great Northern leased six and a half miles of track from the Canadian National. The track from Hayward Junction to Hayward serves Louisiana Pacific and Futurewood. The Wisconsin Great Northern provides five day a week switching of the mills and finally fulfilled its common carrier strategic mission. In 2016, the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad developed a log transload yard near Springbrook and attracted several new freight customers. Some of our crews uh, switching in and out of one of the plants up near Hayward. The Wisconsin Great Northern made a major acquisition in 2019, being the successful bidder of Amtrak's former Pacific Parlor Car. 
Six of these five-level lounge cars were constructed for the Santa Fe Railroad in 1956. They were used by the Santa Fe until 1971 and by Amtrak from 1971 to 2018. In recent times, they served as a sleeper-only lounge on the Coast Starlight train and were considered by many to be among the nicest and most historic cars in Amtrak's fleet. The five refurbished cars were put up for bid in 2018, with the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad being one of the winning bidders in 2019. The car was moved from Indiana to Wisconsin during summer of 2019, with the car serving as a new Sunday Sky Parlor wine and cheese train during late summer and fall of 2019. Now, next year, we want to mention is our silver anniversary in 2021. We will be celebrating our 25th anniversary. In addition to the restoration of the Mark Twain Zephyr, which we'll get to here shortly in the second half of tonight's presentation, well, we'll be launching a series of three new hard copy books for you. They will feature a complete history of the Omaha Axe, a complete history of the Wisconsin Great Northern Railroad itself, and then a complete history and listing of all of our passenger and some of our freight equipment. We also plan to launch a, launch a special 25th anniversary website early next year with more of our history and uh, more history of our equipment. Uh, once it will be completed, we will be posting that website at www.wisconsintrain.com. Again, www.wisconsintrain.com. And it's time now we'll take a look at some of our passenger operations today, a look at some of the trains that we provide for you. And for more on that, I'll turn it back over to Greg. Okay, I think for, for a moment here, maybe we could uh, just uh, take a, a little bit of a break from that and see if anybody had any questions um, about our first uh, 24 years. And uh, we'll give you an opportunity to ask questions uh, a little later after the Zephyr presentation as well. Hey, Greg. Yeah. I'm just out of curiosity, what do you have for maintenance facilities? Uh, we have the big shop in the sky. We have outdoor, uh, outdoor maintenance facilities at this time. Now, behind our depot, we have built uh, three tracks uh, that we intend to put a roof over the top of, uh, build a building on. Um, all the groundwork is done. Uh, we just uh, have not had the opportunity thus far to actually build the building. This is at your Trigo facility? Yes, correct. Right behind our Trigo depot. Okay, thank you. But all of our, all of our work at this point and for the last 25 years has all been outdoors. Any other uh, questions for uh, Greg or Robert before we uh, get into the next uh, segment of our presentation? Sure. Um, what is the current uh, status of the track between uh, Spooner and Trago now without the depot being in Spooner? Is it used uh, for more storage? Or? Yeah, cur currently we use the, the track south of the depot at Trigo, between there and the end of track at the uh, Spooner depot. We use that for car storage. Um, we generally have about eight to nine miles of track north from Trigo, uh, north of Trigo, uh, that we utilize for passenger operations. Then generally speaking, another three to four miles that we use for car storage in the middle. And then everything north of Springbrook, we utilize for our daily freight operation. 